Hey everybody, welcome back to what is hopefully our last video in this particular series. Uh, when we last left off, we had implemented our retrieve data method, which we were using to call, um, make a call to our web service, pull the data back, and then load it in uh, as a city object into our cities array. Uh, now you'll notice, of course, that I still have my breakpoint turned on, so I'm going to turn that off. Now, if we were to build and run this application, it would run, but we wouldn't have any data within our uh, table view itself and one of the reasons for that is we haven't correctly implemented um, our table view data source method so the, here they are now if you remember here's where we left off so we were returning one for the number of sections in table view that's still true uh, within the table view number of rows in section we were returning five well that's not quite accurate because it's going to be dependent on how many objects we've got within our cities array so what we really need to do is say return cities array dot count okay uh, last but not least, we also need to modify or configure the cell itself. Now, as we're doing this, one of the things I want to point out is take a look at this thing called the static, um, the cell identifier. Uh, that cell identifier is currently set to something called cell. Now, if you remember, I had pretty quickly in an earlier video, when we were working within the storyboard, uh, selected our prototype cell. So the way you do that is jump back in, select the prototype cell, and I had set this identifier to be cell. Well, you want this and the one in the file to match up uh, because that's what um, the compiler is going to use to determine what cells to DQ and things like that. All right, so let's jump back. Uh, really all we need to do here is configure our cell with some data that it can display. And the data we want to display are is essentially the city's name. Now that city's name is um, within a city object. So the way for we would want to get that is we would say something like city and we would create an object called city object all right now what we can then do is we can say city object we can give city object or set it to anyway the the object that we're currently looking at in terms of our index path dot row so we would say something like cities array object at index and we would say index path dot row so this allows us to grab the object that is currently um, in the array at this index path.row, set it to city object, and then we can essentially say something like cell dot text label dot text is city object, and we grab its city name property. Uh, while we're in here, we might as well give it an accessory. And we would want an accessory because this is a master detail application. We want to be able to tap, up. we want to convey to the user that they can tap a row and load a detail view. So we'll just say cell.accessory type is equal to UI table view cell um, accessory disclosure indicator, which is the light gray arrow, and that is essentially what we want. Um, so with that done, we can actually build and run our application. No errors there. And this time we should get a table view with our. Uh, cities in it and of course we've got our uh, accessory indicator so perfect with that done our next stop is to actually build the detail view and to do that we're gonna need another custom class so let's just click on our project hit new file and this time we're gonna say okay objective C class let's hit next we want that to be a subclass of UI view controller so that's perfect and I'm just gonna rename this to say detail view controller we do want to leave these two options unchecked uh, we are using storyboard, so the nib is not useful to us. And then we are building an application for the iPhone, so we don't really need that. Okay, hit next. We'll just go ahead and create the file. All right, so uh, we would want to work within our detail view controller file. And so let's just jump down here. And one of the things I'm going to do, first of all, is do a pound import. And I'm going to import city.h because we'll need to create one of those city objects here in a second. Okay, next, we want to create a couple different properties. So I'm just going to say at property, non-atomic, strong, and let's say we will, well, this needs to be an IB outlet. And really what we're creating is a UI label. And uh, we want to create something called city name label. Okay, with that done, let's just copy this property a couple different times because what we want to do is display the city name its country its state its population so we will name this second one uh, cities or let's just call it 
state label. Uh, then we'll need one called country label. And last but not least, population label. Okay, with that done, let's go ahead and synthesize these again. Uh, it's just your preference. Uh, you'll see in a lot of Apple code that they're not doing this anymore, but I just think it makes things cleaner. So we will go ahead and synthesize these to make that. So, okay, so city name label, country label, state label, and population label. All right, so we've uh, finished that up and we need to create one more property and two more methods. Okay, so let's create our other two methods. So we're going to create one that's going to be, again, we'll say property, non-atomic, strong. And this time it's actually going to be a city object. So that's one of the reasons we imported that header. We'll just call this one, if I can type, I don't want it to have a caps lock, uh, current city. And then... Very good. Add a little private mark here just to say methods. And we're going to create a simple method that's not going to return anything. And we'll just call it get city. And this is a method that we're just making up, so you can really call it whatever you like. Um, it is going to take one parameter, which is going to be a city object. Okay, so I guess I'll need to uh, synthesize this as well. So current city. And let's jump back here. We do want to grab this particular item. And again, we'll just drop in a pragma mark. It makes it easier to navigate later. And then we'll work on implementing this map. Okay, so let's add some code in here real quick. Uh, this is going to be pretty simple. We're just going to say city. And we'll say object is assign the value of city object which is essentially uh, what we're getting as part of this particular parameter uh, and then we're gonna say current city is essentially assigned that uh, that object okay and we could probably have uh, removed this duplication here and just said current city is assigned the value of uh, city object. So actually that would that would have worked as well so uh, this is overkill, so let's just say current city is assigned the value of city object. Okay, uh, that's really all we needed there. Uh, then what we also want to do is technically we want to implement one more method. And I'm going to cheat here and just do it directly in this. So we're just going to say void and well, let's call this particular method set labels. I just like it's a nice modular way of doing the code. And what we'll do here is we will set all of our labels text properties uh, using this current city object. So we'll just say city city name label dot text is assigned the value of current city dot city name. So we'll continue to do this. We'll say country label dot text is assigned the value of current city dot city country. And then let's say state label dot text is assign the value of current city that city state and last we've got population label and we are going to just set that to current city dot city population okay very good um, so of course I cheated a little bit like I said I didn't really add this here in our header file but let's go ahead and do that just for consistency Right, so at this point we've got all of our methods set up. Uh, we do need to actually put in some process to call these. So we'll just say load up the UI and I'm going to say self set labels. That's just our method down there that we just created. And um, we are now done working within the uh, detail view controller itself. Now let's jump back into our storyboard. Now within our storyboard, of course, we have no detail view at this point. So that's going to be our first stop. 
uh, let's look within our um, objects library find a view controller object and I've got one right here but you can just search for view controller and that will come up for you um, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to drag this view controller and just let it go uh, that way it'll get added to our storyboard okay uh, with that done let's uh, let's see here I'll try and see if I can grab this and move this so. With that done, what we want to do is, remember we want to be able to tap a, a, a row within our table view and then essentially load the detail view. So we can do that first if we so desired. Uh, we can essentially select this, do a control, click, uh, tap on your control key, hold it down and drag over to our view controller here. It's going to ask us what kind of segue we want. We're going to say push segue. Um, so with that done, let's give ourselves some room here so you can kind of see how that might work okay so we've got that in place uh, the other thing we'll need to do is again select your view controller so let's zoom back in um, we'll select the view the entire view controller by just clicking this and then we want to jump over to our uh, identity inspector and here you're gonna see that the class is currently set to UI view controller we want to change that to our detailed view controller class that we just created alright so with that done uh, we've got this set up. Now what we want to do is add those labels that we said we want to use. So let's just do our uh, labels here real quick. I'm going to start dragging these labels in. And just to make things easier to read, I am going to start labeling these as city name. That way we know what exactly what we've set up. So drag this out just a little bit. It's a little bit bigger. And since it's a city name, we'll just make it slightly larger go 22 um, we are not then let's drag in a couple more labels so we'll say this one is for example uh, we've got city name so we probably want city state just so we know what's going on uh, and then just to make things quicker just hold on to your option key and drag down another label and then hold it again and drag down another label so this allows us to quickly build these label so we'll just say city state we'll call this one uh, that state so we want country and last but not least we want population and I'm going to just change this to say state all right so with that done uh, we need to hook these labels up to something so let's work on that as well uh, the easiest way I found to do this is to pull out the assistant editor and when we pull up the assistant editor you notice that it's loading our detail view header file so I can just actually so this is our city name label I can just drag from here to here uh, that connects that up same with the state same with the country and then of course the population okay so we've got that configured now, but we're not quite done yet so what we need to do from here is we need to jump back into our uh, view controller file or class for this particular view controller because although we've got the segue set up uh, we don't have um, the correct method configured to be able to do that the other thing we want to might want to do is we may want to give this segue an identifier so let's just do that um, we'll just call the uh, segue no, let's just give it a nice name we'll just call it push detail view as the well that's the identifier we'll give it all right so we've got that in place now we can jump back into our cities view controller implementation file and the method we're looking for is actually already given to us it's this one so uh, you'll notice that came through with the sample code it's called prepare for segue uh, sender all right so let's uncomment this and then we're gonna add some code into this particular method to wrap up this particular video all right, so we're on our home stretch. Uh, really, what we want to do here is add a couple lines of code. So first thing we're going to do is put in an if statement, and let's make some room here. So what we're going to do within this if statement is we're going to check first of all to make sh to see which of the segways is being called. Um, so the way you can do that is you can just uh, say segue identifier. Right, so you grab that and you get that because you've you've already you do get the segue as a parameter. And then we're going to say is equal to string. And what's important here is 
think we had called this push detailed view, right? So I just need to confirm that real quick. Uh, and that value is coming from whatever we had set up here. So it is in fact push detailed view. So great. So we've got that correct. Uh, and then within here, um, we want to do a couple of different things. So we'll first get the index path and we'll say ns index path. Let's call that index path for simplicity. Is self dot table view index path for selected row. So that gives us the current uh, rows index path. And then we get the object for the selected row. So we just say something like city object. And we're going to say cities array, which is here. And then we'll say object at index. Then we're going to give it index path dot row, which is in this case essentially coming from here. All right, and with that, we have one last thing we need to do. We'll just say segue destination view controller, and then we want to call a method there. We're going to say get city, and we'll pass it the object. So we're getting an error here, and that's because we need to identify this particular method. So let me just see what we call that method. Uh, okay, we did call that get city. So let's see why we are getting an error. And rather than me fumbling around, I'm just going to quickly pause this video and make sure um, I can isolate the errors. So once, all right, guys, uh, sorry about that delay. So we are getting an error here. Uh, the error is essentially going to say no known instance for selector get city. So it says I have no idea where you're getting this particular method from. And if you remember, within our detailed view controller, we do in fact have a method called get city. Now our problem is we have not actually imported that detailed view controller file. So let's just do that, and that error should go away. So we'll just say detailed view controller h command s and voila, the error disappears. All right. So we are now ready to build and run our application. So let's do that. Again, we get the cities. This time when I tap the city, I actually get a detailed view, city name, state, country, and current population. So we can do that for multiple. Uh, and that's it. So we, are, we have now successfully built an application that has, um, makes a call to a external data source, i.e. a database on a public web server, gets the data back as JSON. We've used storyboards to do all of this. Um, so I, hopefully this is helpful to everybody. Uh, it is, like I said, an up-to-date version of the tutorial that already existed. Thanks for watching, and good luck with your programming.